sometimes you bring the actual real leaf in and even though it's pretty it doesn't stay pretty for long hello and welcome to deliberately creative i'm stephanie and i want to help you decorate for autumn we want to bring that beauty into our home by making leaves on real paper real canvas things that will last all through the season and for years to come let's get started and see how fast fun and easy it is to make autumn leaves to decorate your home all of my paints are from deco art and the pouring medium is too i'm using deco art americana satin cotton ball white the deco art metallic splendid gold the americana citron green jack-o-lantern burnt sienna and true red i have the patterns for all of these leaves i went outside picked up some leaves and traced around them but i know that some people don't have some of these kinds of trees and they'd really like to do this project so you can download the patterns straight from my website print them out glue the printout onto a piece of cardboard and then just cut it out and you're ready to start tracing around on your canvas or on your paper this is watercolor paper you can do it on cardstock it's you want something with a little bit of body that's all I'm doing this on top of a piece of freezer paper this is what it looks like you can find this in the grocery store sometimes you can find it in the craft stores or in the variety stores near the quilting section first off shiny side up on the freezer paper and I'm going to put some of this white down and the neat thing about it is this is abstract. I love doing abstracts because you never know what's going to end up happening when you're all done. The, the canvas is gessoed, meaning that it has a preparation that's going to on it that's going to keep the paint from soaking through. If you were getting canvas straight from the fabric store, you would need to gesso it first. But I don't need to gesso first because it's already done. Now I'm just going and dripping some different colors on here. That burnt sienna, the red, the citron green, and then there's going to be some metallic gold. And you want a fair amount of paint down, but you don't have to totally cover the surface there's little bits of that white paper showing through and that's okay because you know it's going to smush together you do want it to fill up a big enough area so that you can cover your canvas all right so now we're just going to take a piece of that canvas it has a big huge leaf i had real leaves that i traced my patterns from and they also give, gave me the idea for the different colors. So there's kind of a citron green and that gold is in this and the brown. So I'm taking this, I drew all of my patterns on the back side so I could see which direction I'm going. And I am just going to drop this down onto the table on top of the freezer paper and smush this around and because I can see where my leaf is, I know, I think I'm going to pick this up, going this way and this way and then up. Look at that. By picking it up off of both sides to the center, I got the center line without having to do anything. Nice thing about this, I can lay this flat. It's not going to curl on me because of the gesso. All right, I'm just going to start putting paint down and dipping these. Put some more paint down. I think I want some more of that white. And orange. Doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to plan where it's going. Let's go ahead and 
Now you can see this down here. Looks pretty on the table, doesn't it? Remember, we're not dipping the side with the drawing on it. We're dipping the other side. So straight down, wiggle it around, make sure that we get paint going across. I'm not worried about it mixing. These colors are going to work out really well with each other. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to pick it up from the top corner towards the middle and the bottom corner towards the middle and then lift up. So now I have that line again. Look at that. I hope you've enjoyed this part. Come back in just a flash for the finishing up. All right, guys, we're back. The sheets of dipped canvas turned out so pretty. All of these lovely colors and details that come out when you cut them out. Look at that. Such cool things. I really, really enjoy the variety and the variations, but when you stack them all together without some kind of detailing on them, they sort of blend together. And I really enjoy how using a combination of non-doodled and doodled works. Look at that. Now these could be punched and layered up and hung on a doorway. Wouldn't that be pretty? And I would just use some cotton twine to tie them together and hang them. And when they're laying against something flat, they lay flat. So you could put these on a table, just scatter them around on a tablecloth. That would be really pretty. Having different sizes. And look at that metallic gold. I love how these look. Now, and and also on the paper. Now, I had said before I was just going to doodle on the paper and make a card, and I think that's what I am going to do. But look how nice and sturdy that is on this 200-pound watercolor paper. It would be just about as sturdy on 140 pounds. So if that's what you've got, go for it. Have fun. Now, I have doodled on this one and I showed it on my Facebook and Instagram and people were like oh that is so pretty so I have to share how to do that but first I want to show you how quick and easy it is when you've got the pattern and this is just drawn with a pencil on the back side of this canvas when it's painted like this look how easy you can still cut this canvas just follow the line or not and you can get some really quick and fun designs. You don't have to follow it exactly. See, I'm going to go wide. I didn't want that line exactly the same. You have a pattern. The pattern is there as a guide, but it doesn't have to be exactly to the pattern. And look, we've got this beautiful huge leaf and how we had picked it up, picking it up going one side, the other side, and then lifting, we actually ended up with the center line. Now to doodle on this, oh, I have to show this one. Anybody want to see me draw a wolf howling at a moon on a leaf? Let 
me know down below in the comment section if that's something that would interest you. I think I'm going to record it, but I won't share it if nobody wants to see it. There's a whole bunch of ways to doodle on a leaf. You don't have to stay just with white. Now I was playing around on one of these scraps, which is a really good way to practice before you do your leaves. But remember, you're still just doodling, so it doesn't really matter. You can take the Faber-Castell pit pens and you can draw right on with a dark color. You can take a fine liner bottle filled with white acrylic paint and doodle. There's, oh, I just got the long pen style. Be easier on the hand to hold. You get it in a pack of three. And I've got that listed down below in the more information box with a link. Now, any links that are down in the information box are affiliate links. I do earn a small commission that goes to help support my channel and to support me as an artist. So if you're looking for a way to help support me, that's a way. We're going to get going on a doodled leaf. Years down the road, you will have beautiful, fun designs to share with your kids. Now here's a leaf, and I'm going to do just some basic doodling. Matter one. Ooh, yeah. So I want to show you how to doodle on a leaf really quick with a Posca pen. I'm taking a fairly wide marker because this one, this leaf, is quite large. I would use a finer Posca marker on a smaller leaf. Or if I need some smaller details. But I think I want to enhance this design going through, but I don't want to draw right over it. So I'm just going to go boop, right along that line and put a little line like this. I think I want to outline the stem. And you can go ahead and put an outline just slightly in from the edge. This gives you the opportunity to give it a little more interest, a little more shape, and maybe I want this bit right down here to be a little bit thicker. And now I kind of like how the veins on this leaf really were strong on the natural leaf. So I'm going to go ahead and put some veins on. Oops, look at that. How pretty that is. So I'm going to take my cue from the lines that are on here and emphasize some of these fun things. So I see like a vein going that way. And I see one going this way. I'm just looking at the leaf and the way the paint went on. I think there's another vein coming up and over like this and like that. Isn't that pretty? And you can just start making it more and more detailed. If you ever wanted to practice drawing trees, look at the veins on a leaf because they grow. The veins are actually exactly the same as the way the tree grows. Take a look. It's real. It's true. The way the veins on a leaf are is exactly the same way that a that the branches on a tree are. They get smaller as they get farther away from the trunk. And the trunk is down here at the base where it joins in with the stem. I think I want some stripes in the stem. We are not making a realistic leaf. And I think I'm going to go ahead and start putting a few dots in some of these sections. You don't have to mash the pen hard, just touch. This paint dries in about five minutes. It's acrylic paint. It will bond straight to this. It will be, it's just another layer of paint. So I think this one, I'm going to put 
some little scoops, scallops. This is a great project to do with kids. They are so imaginative. Let's see. This one's going to get some little scallops in it. Now you could do mandalas. Oh, that's pretty. I hope you enjoyed that. Quick little doodle. Now see how these look together. That is so pretty. You could lay these out. Wouldn't that be pretty on a harvest table with a whole bunch of doodled leaves just scattered along a white tablecloth? I have so much fun doing this. I hope you did too. Please check out more of my videos with all kinds of different pouring and doodling and crafts, projects galore. And let me know in the comments if there's anything that you really want to see being done that you haven't seen being done because I like to learn how to do new projects. As always, click that like button, subscribe to the channel, Make sure you click the bell so that you'll be notified when new videos go up because YouTube will not tell you that I posted a new video unless you click the bell. As always, go out, do something creative, take care of yourself so you can take care of those around you, and I hope to see you back here again really soon. Bye.